The name is Fergley. Berg Fergley. Detective Berg Fergley. Esquire. 30 years now I've been in this line of work. It's a thankless job, but somebody's got to do it. And I'm one of the best they've got in this town. I've worked alone for as long as this bottle of liquid courage will let me remember. Well, that is until today. Today I work with the rookie. So boss, what's first for us today? <sighs> Look kid, I'm not your boss. I'm your partner. But what I say goes. You understand? You got it chief. So uh, what's first on the agenda? Well, we got a stakeout. There's these two no-good criminals. They've been known to frequent this watering hole. We're going to park across the street and wait for them. See if they make a move. So we just sit and wait? Yeah, it's a stakeout. It's going to be a long, boring night. But this job is easy. Easy? <laughs> you think this job is easy? <laughs> you try watching half these perps filthy up these streets only to get off because they have the right connections. You try spending countless sleepless nights drowning yourself at the bottom of a bottle just trying to keep these demons at bay. You try watching your partner get trampled to death by a stampede of wildebeest at the end of the day. Tell me that's easy. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. You just sit there and shut your pie hole and let me finish this paper. Dorito? No. I've always had a big love for mystery games, and trying to pinpoint where that love started, I realized it was when I was a little kid watching my dad here play a little game called Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon. I almost forgot the name of the game, but I nailed it. Right? Who are you talking to? The camera. Such a nerd. <sighs> Tex Murphy Under a Killing Moon, made by Access Software, was released in 1994. And though I didn't know it at the time, it's actually the third game in a series. The most recent of which was actually kickstarted and released in 2014, 16 years after the previous entry. It's a point and click adventure game that utilizes FMV, or full motion video, which was popular back in the day with a lot of games like Wing Commander and Night Trap. So, they found it again, have they? I thought we'd taken care of it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, that was James Earl Jones. As in Darth Vader, Mufasa, that dude from the Sandlot. The uh, forces of evil are persistent, sir. And apparently he's accompanied by Mr. Smithers. The game takes place in San Francisco in the year 2042, where we see our titular hero, Tex Murphy, flying around in his fancy car as he gives us some exposition. In the moonlight, New San Francisco sparkles like a chunk of cubic zirconium, an island of hollow beauty surrounded by a red sea of radiation. Five million souls drowning in gamma rays. Some lucky people have a natural immunity to genetic mutation caused by the radiation. I'm one of them. So, apparently, the series takes place in a world torn apart by war and radiation. At this point, you're probably wondering why you clicked on a video about contradiction, and I'm talking about Under a Killing Moon. Well, I had originally planned to do a video about Under a Killing Moon, until I played it. Yeah, so moving around in this game is real dumb. You have to press the spacebar in order to switch between observation mode and movement mode, and when in movement mode, you have to move the mouse forward or back to accelerate or decelerate, and side to side to turn. I guess this was in the days before WASD was a thing? This wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for the fact that you still move when you stop moving the mouse. The idea, I guess, is to move the mouse back to the center where it was before you started moving. It's sort of hard to explain. Just know that it sucks. It sort of feels like the video game equivalent of riding one of those two-wheeled scooters that people like to call hoverboards. <laughs> So, as much as I tried to put up with the controls for the sake of the video, I just got fed up with it. I will say that one thing I do like about Under a Killing Moon 
is just the horrible, cheesy, nostalgic charm of the FMV cutscenes. Probably impressive back in the day, but by today's standards, they're kinda laughable. Which is what I think I love about them. Look out, Tex! It's a window ghost! Oh, never mind. It's a reflection. I'm really glad there are subtitles, because this guy is kinda hard to understand. Yep, one morning I just looked in the mirror. I'm retired in a nice secluded island. Oh, I can't. I'm thinking about it for years. Underappreciated. Oh, I'm not a decent. I think my favorite thing about the acting in this game is Tex's dry comedic misery. Oh, great. Another incoming message that won't print out. My phone would work perfectly if it hadn't been disconnected. Lord knows the only exercise I've had lately is tipping the bottle and flipping cards into my hat. I just got done with the chair. I'll be sending the bill to your husband. Oh, Rudy, let's not think about my husband right now. I was, I was watching you upholster and you're so big and strong. <laughs> the way you hold me, Tex, Tex never held me like this. <clears throat> what was that? It sounds like they just randomly recorded somebody clearing their throat while working on the game. Hey Johnson, I know you're busy tightening up those graphics on level 3, but you think you could do me a favor and just clear your throat into this recorder? <clears throat> Fantastic. Oh, kiss me, Rudy, and set my lips on fire. Okay. I mean, sure, I guess. I'm not a big fan of kissing, but I got nothing else planned today. Oh, Tex, honey! I wasn't expecting you home so soon. Listen, how about I don't charge you on the labor and we call it even? Fair enough. But from here on out, Rudy, customer servicing doesn't include my wife. See, honey? I saved you some money again. Aren't you happy? Wow, this lady's performance is top-notch. I wish I could be as talented as her someday. As amusing as the cheesy acting and the George Lucas levels of green screen are, the game made me wonder if maybe there was a more modern, higher production value FMV detective game out there. And that's when I stumbled upon... Con contradiction. Contradiction, the all-video murder mystery adventure. Or, Contradiction, Spot the Liar. I've seen both names and I don't know which one's right. The game is actually another successful Kickstarter project that released in 2015. And I love it. Freaking love it. In Contradiction, you'll play as Frederick Jenks. Actually, that's... Detective Inspector Frederick Jenks. You sound like you're from London! Jenks has been tasked with visiting the small town of Edenton to investigate a closed case surrounding the suicide of a young college student named Kate Vine. As is usually the case with suicides in these types of stories, foul play is suspected. I have until first thing tomorrow morning to decide whether her death was a simple accident or whether this was murder. The game is completely video based. You navigate by clicking on parts of the screen that take you from one area to another and watch as Jenks walks from location to location. Or if you're like me and don't have the patience for that throughout the entire game, you can just open the map and click on the specific place you want to go. You travel around town scoping out the various areas, clicking on the magnifying glass whenever it appears on screen to further inspect for clues. As you find items or subjects of interest, more and more topics of discussion are added to your journal to question the townspeople about. This is basically the flow of what you'll do throughout the game. Explore all that you can, then talk to someone, ask them about everything, and then repeat until you've exhausted all your options. One thing I really liked is that you can only talk to certain people at certain times. So, until you do what you need to do to advance to the next hour, you'll only be able to interact with certain characters. Which I felt was a good limitation to help pace things. The main point of these conversations, and where the game gets the name from, is the concept of catching people's contradictions. Your journal keeps track of what each character has to say about each particular topic. If you notice that someone contradicts themselves, you can click on the two topics with contradicting information, and Jenks will confront the person with their lies. Each time you catch a contradiction, it results in what to me is the most satisfying sound in this game. Aha! Uh -huh. Ooh, you just know you've done good when you hear that sound. Just look at the intensity in those eyes. I know if a man with that look were questioning me, I wouldn't dare lie to him. I think the only people in this game that are more intense than Jinx are Ryan and Paul Rand. Father and son team and creators of Atlas a local business course that Kate Vine was taking shortly before her untimely death. This guy's my favorite. The way he ranges from rich, snobby businessman having a casual conversation to downright outraged, yet still always manages to keep that drink in his hand. This guy's a champ. Now his father, Paul. This guy is just... terrifying. She likes to be in control. Like Ryan. 
shame, isn't it, that I'm in control of both of them? I have a new theory on who Supreme Leader Snoke is. It's this guy. It's him. It's, it's, it's that guy. This leads me to what I consider to be one of the main draws of this game. The acting. It's a small cast, and I think they pulled it off. Everyone does a decent to awesome job with their performance, in my opinion, and it makes the story that much more fulfilling to participate in. First, we have Simon, played by Blonde Matt Smith. You can find him in the most reverberated kitchen ever constructed by man. Is it okay in here? Oh, this will be fine, yeah. Do you want anything? Water? No, 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 I won't be long. Then you have Emma, Simon's girlfriend and friend of the victim. She's also a terrible liar. Um, no, I went to, um, no, I went home last, last Thursday night, actually. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, uh, oh. Inside the pub, there's Rebecca, pub owner and wife of Ryan Rand. Of all the characters, she probably has the flattest personality, but it seems fitting for her. Then there's James. He's a local farmer, weirdo, and conspiracy theorist who's farming a little more than potatoes, if you know what I'm saying. He's also not a big help. No. No. Nah. 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 Oh, and how could I forget about Kyle? You don't interact with him much, but when you do, it's always such a delight. Pathetic. As you advance through the game by catching people in their dirty, filthy, disgusting lies, you'll come to realize that something deeper is going on here. Something more sinister than a simple murder. What secrets lie beneath the quiet, peaceful exterior of this little town? Drugs? Aliens? Wait a minute. Unfortunately, this is the point where I need to stop talking about Contradiction, because as a game that focuses so heavily on the story and the mystery, I really don't want to risk spoiling anything for anybody out there who might be watching this and want to check the game out, because I really think you should. I know I probably talked more about Under a Killing Moon than I did Contradiction, but I really wanted to talk about Contradiction and I had to pat it out somehow without spoiling it. I probably could have made this an episode of Games You Should Play, but I felt like that format didn't really fit this game. Um, uh, oh, and also, this is my channel and I do what I want, so... Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, feel free to check out one of these other videos you see here on the screen. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can also follow me by looking up The Portly Gamer on the social networks below.